Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Bus Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. We are both Asian. So for today's episode, we are discussing Season 1, Episode 6, Skin. Written by John Shaban, directed by Robert Duncan McNeil. I also don't know either of those names. John Shaban is a pretty prominent writer for early season Supernatural. You probably don't know him because like the writers you're familiar with are the Destiel writers. <laughs> right, I know about Bedland and Bobo Barons and Yoki and Steve Yoki, yeah, and Davy Perez and such. But this guy is pretty. I think he's pretty prominent. Like, what if the the more we do this rewatch, well, rewatch for me, the more we'll come across him. Also, he is very important to the lore of this show, this podcast. You know why? How so? He was the writer who introduced Busty Asian Beauties. I no! think. <laughs> no! It was his episode. I'm, I'm going to point out the episode when we get there. Okay. I'm, I'm actually not sure if he wrote it in or it was a directorial choice. Yeah, or maybe the prop team. Maybe the prop team was like, you know what would be so funny if we were racist today? So I'm not sure. Maybe he's not to blame, but Mr. Johnny, Mr. Johnny Shaban, yeah, he's going to be yeah. around. All right, yeah. Ugh, boo. I hate this guy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we start with the actual episode, Crystal, uh, what were your expectations before going in? I feel like this is an episode where my expectations really did not match what was actually happening. So, I knew that this was a shapeshifter episode, and the shapeshifter took Dean's form. And I've seen the gift sets a lot, where he's like, by a fire or something and talking about how like he's a lo- like how the shapeshifter is a lonely creature who only wants to be loved he's like me meaning like he's like dean who he's pretending to be blah 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 and then i also knew that dean eventually shoots him but is considered someone who murdered a bunch of people because the shapeshifter murdered a bunch of people while he was Dean. I think because I've really only seen the shapeshifter in that one gift set, I thought he was going to be a fairly sympathetic character, but instead yeah. he's just an incel who rapes <laughs> women and then tortures and murders them. So, so yeah. They do try to make him sympathetic, and they fail tremendously. All I want to be loved, and the way to do that is to tie up women and beat them up. Oh, also, um, I think this is the point where we say that this episode features a lot of violence against women. Yeah. So, uh, if you're not into that, we will be discussing it. So, if you don't want to hear about that, you know, uh, be free. Yeah. Yeah. Come back next episode for some guy with a hook. Is that is that the title? Hook man? Hook man, yes. <laughs> Come back for Hookman. Everyone's favorite episode that I've never heard about. <laughs> At least we have our first Crystal hasn't heard about an episode episode. <laughs> so we start in St. Louis, Missouri, and we open at night, and it's very dark. We see a girl, she's tied up in a chair. There is, um, like, rock-ish chill music playing throughout this scene. It's pretty good. I think this episode is where they really develop a taste for the needle drop because this episode has a lot of them and they're all very good. They're all very exceptional and I enjoyed them tremendously. So there is a SWAT team outside the house and they are sneaking up inside. They find the victim, the girl who was tied up, and they untie her and remove the gag from her mouth. And she points towards the balcony door. And so the SWAT team goes there and we see... Dun dun dun, Dean, Dean holding a knife 
and trying to escape. His face is like dead fish eyes. He he looks creepy. And also this scene is in slow motion. Again, extremely bad slow motion. <laughs> but slow motion nonetheless. <laughs> and we cut to one week earlier. So we're at Sam and Dean at a gas station. And they're talking about where they're going. Sam's not paying attention to Dean. So Dean says, Sam wears women's underwear. As as a knower of the Dean wears panties plot, I, I understand that this is projection, but I also think it's slightly misogynistic. What do we say about adding a point five? Mm, no, I don't God think damn so. It. I think it's, it's right. a different... I think it's a different... Okay, yeah, it's more of a homophobia, transphobia kind of thing, right? Yes. Like, a transmisogyny thing. Should I keep up a transmisogyny count too, or <laughs> how, how often do we think that's gonna- Transmisogyny is partly misogyny, though. It's the intersection of transphobia and misogyny. Is this transmisogyny? Is this what's happening? I think it's the- I do know that a lot of, like, jokes about, like, men wearing dresses or, like, men liking to wear panties is like, ooh, like, this is secretly a trans woman, but not a trans woman because we don't respect them, but it it's bad. I don't know if you know this, but towards season eight, we get, a, I think, a trans misogyny moment as well from our beloved character, Castiel. I, no, I, I do know about this one. He says, like, something, and then he says, I don't think she was a female, right? That was... Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, Ugh. I think um, this one, I think keeping account would be a bit difficult because we might forget because it is quite sparse. I'm oh, assuming. I have, no, I have a spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are well prepared. Okay, sure. Let's do it. Okay. Let's just count um, supernatural transmisogyny tab because okay. I feel like, you know, it's... It's more nebulous in terms of who says it and what. Okay. Instead of yeah. just like a Dean misogyny, uh, trans misogyny tab. Okay. All right. We've got one supernatural trans misogyny. Right. And then Sam's like, I have been listening. I've just been checking emails. Dean is surprised that Sam still keeps in touch with his college friends. Dean, it's been like three weeks. It's been three weeks. Like, of course he's still talking to his college friends. I guess Dean assumed that immediately afterwards, he's like, Why do you need everyone else? You got me, you know? Oh, yeah. He has so many problems and disorders. Yeah, Dean's shocked that Sam still talks to his college friends and is like, How? What do you tell them about what you're doing? Aren't you lying? Sam says, I just don't tell them everything. Dean says, Yeah. That's called lying. Sam says, so what, am I supposed to just cut everybody out of my life? And Dean basically goes, yeah, in a job <laughs> like this, you can't get close to people. Problems and disorders, I must say. Sam says, you're kind of antisocial, you know that, which I think, do you think, because I know at the beginning, in the first scene, we're not supposed to know yet if it was Dean who did all of that or a monster. Do you think that this scene with Dean being called specifically antisocial is supposed to sow the seed of doubt further in us? Like, are we supposed to go, oh god, maybe he secretly is a terrible murderer, man? Uh, I don't think so. I think it was just a line. Uh, I, I actually don't remember what it was like watching this the first time. If I was like, oh my god, Dean is a murderer. Or I just knew instantly that it was a monster. Yeah, because I feel like at this point, people have only known him for five episodes. So they could assume that, hey, like in season one, maybe this is the time that we get the big twist that Dean is evil and was the one who killed John, you know? Yeah, especially because uh, last episode, I forgot to mention this, but like, because they were trying to build the suspense that like, maybe Dean killed John, right? Like, that could have been his secret. Yeah, that could have been why his eyes were bleeding. Yeah, but like, who knows? Right, so maybe, yeah, we're here and they're like, oh god, Dean's secret is that he's a murderer and does murders. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he is a murderer who does murders, but not a murderer of people. 
like human people as far as we know so far. Sam says, oh god, this email is from my friend Rebecca from Stanford, and apparently her brother Zach has been charged for murdering his girlfriend, even though I know he wouldn't do that, and Rebecca says that he wouldn't do that. Uh, in this scene, like, S Sam was like, oh my god, and Dean leaned in, right? And Sam was like, oh, it's this Rebecca, my one of my friends. Oh my and god, Dean yeah, goes, I how could I skip over this? This was, I was going to tally that, yeah. Yeah, Sam says, this is from this girl, Rebecca Warren, and Dean says, is she hot? Can I add a Dean misogyny tally yes. for that? Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I, it annoyed me. And I, you know what? You know what I'm waiting for? I'm waiting for what? a Sam misogyny so that we can even it out. Me too. <laughs> um, there was a moment later in this episode where I was like, is this? But I don't think it was. It's when he asked Becky to make them some sandwiches because he wants to talk to Dean in private. Oh, let's when we get there, let's discuss it. Yeah, we'll discuss it when we get there. Right, so Dean's misogynistic. He doesn't want to go to St. Louis to help out. They have a bit of a staring contest, and then they go. Did you- the, actually, when I saw this scene, when I saw the, the staring contest and then the car moving, because it's a wide shot, right? They zoom out and the car is, like, zooming off. I thought the implication was that, because Dean's outside of the car and Sam's inside, Sam just started <laughs> driving. Like, I was like, Sam just stole the Impala. Go, Sam! <laughs> That would have been hilarious, but unfortunately, that's not what. That's happens. not what actually happened. Did you Ugh. do you think this staring contest? Sam's eyes are considered puppy dog eyes. I no, don't think I so feel like yet. He just had normal eyes. I think he was just like staring at Dean, like, uh, try to try to make me do what you want me to do. Yeah, he was glaring. I think he'll deploy the puppy dog eyes later in this show. Yes. Oh, we forgot. We forgot something very important. Wait, what did we forget? Lawboy at Sanford.edu. <laughs> oh my god, how did I forget? No, oh, you're right. Oh my god, that was so important. Yeah, when we see when we see Sam's email on his phone, this is when we learn that his official school email is lawboy <laughs> at Stanford.edu. Okay, what are our theories on how he did this? How he got lawboy? Yeah, how he got law boy. I have no fucking idea. Aren't the school supposed to give you your emails? Yeah, the school usually gives you an email and it's usually first name dot last name at school dot edu or first initial last name at school dot edu. I feel like the only way this could have happened if is if Sam signed up for college under a fake name like Lewis Allboy, but I don't think that's what happened. <laughs> Maybe he just has a hacker friend or a friend on the administration. I mean, he, Sam is good with computers. Yeah, Sam is good at computers. Maybe maybe he hacked the Stanford system just so he could be law boy. Maybe he has like an official email and then he has like a friend's email where He's Mr. Lowboy. But it's through the Stanford, it's through stanford.edu. So he had to at least hack the school system to get a personal email that had Lowboy and Stanford in it. Another trans Sam moment. So they arrive in Becky's house. They do their highs and hellos. Sam and Becky are obviously close because they hug and everything. And then they come in. Now, Becky is obviously rich. Mm -hmm. They make a point of this. Like, the place she's staying at is really nice. Her parents live in Paris for half the year and all that. Right. I feel like the point of them coming to her house is to show the class divide between Stanford and his friends at the time. Like, he and Dean look very much out of place. It's so obvious that Sam feels out of place place and he mentions this like later on which we'll bring up when it comes mm -hmm. up but like i mean it does make sense right like yeah uh fancy institutions in the u.s mostly do house wealthy students is that true <laughs> or is that just no, my preconceived it, no, notion no it definitely is true because well these schools do have decent financial aid packages but the i know that the average income at a lot of ivy league schools and stuff is about 
a hundred thousand a year like the average household income of the students there damn it is generally a a place with many rich people sam is a full ride scholarship and uh, apart from that he also comes from uh kansas uh (laughs) well he comes from that's not the point like the (laughs) point is like no but there there (laughs) they didn't have a a home class thing like but, like, there's not a lot of students from Arizona at high-ranking, like, co- colleges, I'm pretty sure. Oh. There aren't a lot of students from Kansas and Ohio, I think. There are specific states where you don't find a lot of students at high-ranking colleges. Oh, that makes sense. But, like, I was talking more of the fact that, like, he didn't have a permanent... Home, yeah. Yeah, permanent home, like, for most of his childhood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We start talking about the case. So, Zach, Rebecca's brother, showed up at his place one day, well, one night, and found his girlfriend tied up and bloody and not breathing. He calls 911, and the cops arrest him. So, Becky says that the only way he could have killed the girlfriend was if he was in two places at the same time, because Zach was seen in the security tape coming home at 10.30, but was with Becky until after 12. Sam asks to see the crime scene, and Becky's like, why would you look at the crime scene? And Sam just straight up lies. He just straight up says, Dean is a cop. Fun continuation from last episode with like, what are you guys cops? And Dean says something like that. They're really digging in the monster cops thing. Dean is like, oh yeah, I'm a cop from Brisbane, Arizona. You know, I'm out of duty right now. Becky says no at first. She eventually says yes. She leaves and then Dean berates Sam. They're like, look who's lying now. You're such a straight shooter with your friends, aren't you? And Sam says, well, we've looked into less, so may as well look into this. So they're at Zach's house, and Dean says, yeah, this is totally okay to do because I'm an officer of the law. There's blood all over the furniture and the walls. Sam asks Rebecca if she wants to wait outside because he's being having a good bedside manner and being comforting and thoughtful. He was doing his ASMR voice again. <laughs> yeah, he was doing his ASMR voice again, um, but Rebecca decides to come in. Finally, she starts crying, and I was like, finally, because she seemed so okay earlier. I was like, what? How are you completely fine right now? How are you smiling and hugging Sam? Break down. So yeah, so she starts crying and talks about how there was no sign of a break-in and that, that Emily let her attacker in. She also says she has no clue who could have done this, but a week earlier, someone broke into the apartment and stole Zach's clothes. Also, a dog outside is barking really wildly, and Rebecca says that that dog used to be nice, but changed around the time of the murder. Now we're to Sam again, and he's looking at a photo of him with his arms around Zach and Rebecca. He's wearing this, like, button-up shirt which looks very formal and very not like what he wears now so i was like oh god poor boy really really had to pretend to be someone else at stanford huh sam and dean decide that the dog becoming angry could be a sign of the paranormal and then they also decide to ask rebecca for the security tape she says that she stole it from the lawyers and can show it to them. We zoom in on the group picture on the fridge to Zach's face and then cut to Zach, or at least Zach's doppelganger, sitting on a bench. And we get an Asian character. (laughs) Yes! Wait, so he's writing something down on a notebook and we see him watching this couple who are kissing each other goodbye. The guy in in, in the couple is Asian, so like hashtag representation. Yeah, maybe. hashtag representation. Thank you, King. So the guy is leaving for Kansas City for the night, and he's leaving his girlfriend behind. And we see Zach looking at the girl with a sinister smile as his eyes flicker into gold. Oh, uh, so now we're back at Rebecca's house where they're watching the security footage. Rebecca says that the video wasn't tampered with. Sam notices something and asks Rebecca if they can get those beers now. 
and then also says maybe some sandwiches too, which I didn't like very much, but I don't know if it was a Sam misogyny moment, because I know he just wanted her out of the room, but I feel like there were better ways to do it. What do you think? I, d I also don't think, because like, if, if Becca was a guy, like, I think Sam would have still pulled the right, same the thing. the sandwiches thing. Yeah. No, yeah. I agree. Rebecca says, what do you think this is? Hooters? And Dean says, I wish I'm going to kill him. <laughs> now that is a moment. That's a point. All right. Oh, for, for those who have not, who aren't, who aren't aware yet, we're at 10.5. And Hooters is a restaurant. I'm going to describe Hooters for us. Yeah. <laughs> because, okay, um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what Hooters is, so tell me if I'm correct or not. Okay. Okay. So, Hooters is this restaurant with an owl as their mascot. And basically, it's a restaurant that features um, scantily clad... Is that offensive to say? Scantily clad? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it is. Okay, I'll just continue. Like, scantily clad waitresses? Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. The Hooters in the name is, is slang for breasts. And the point is that the oh! waitresses are wearing, like, bikinis. <laughs> are they for real wearing bikinis? Or are they wearing, like, insane crop tops? Um, I'm not actually sure. Let me, like... Oh great, I'm gonna look up Hooters Way for some <laughs> Google images like an asshole. Okay. No, okay, so it's just it's tank tops with, with low necklines and then shorts. So yeah, they're not oh. wearing bikinis, they're just Is that particularly hygienic for a food place? Um, I mean, I don't think that your cleavage is really crawling with bacteria, so you're probably okay. Right, so after Rebecca leaves, Sam shows that when Zach looks directly at the camera, his eyes glow silver, and that's supposed to be weird. Um, and then Sam says, yeah, I think the dog that was freaking out saw this thing, and it's probably, like, Zach's evil doppelganger. And Dean agrees. So, the man we saw earlier that Zach was watching comes home. And then, his apparently his flight got cancelled, so he's back early. He he's walking around the house. He's calling uh, he's calling out for his girlfriend Lindsay, and he sees blood splatter on the wall and finds Lindsay tied up to a chair. So he ungags her. She says, "Please don't hurt me anymore." Yeah, which made me really really upset. It was a very upsetting scene. So he hears glass shattering and he goes out to investigate. And then we see his doppelganger who hits this guy in the head until he's unconscious. Now we're back at Zach's house where Dean and Sam are inspecting, because Sam realizes that the doppelganger probably left through the back door and they could follow a trail there. Sam sees blood smeared on a pole, but then the trail ends. Um, an ambulance drives past them and they go over and they see the Asian man from earlier being handcuffed and stepping into a police car. A woman says that this guy tried to kill his wife, tied her up, and beat her, even though he seemed like such a nice guy. Dean says to Sam later after asking around, the guy, oh, whose name is Alex, he said that he came home from a business trip and saw his wife already tied up and someone who looked exactly like him attacking him. So they decide that it was probably a shapeshifter who did both Zach's girlfriend's murder and Lindsay's murder. And Dean says Ooh. the agriculture line again. Yep. <laughs> yep. The first one was by Sam, right? Yeah, it was Sam in episode four. Every single culture, every single religion in the world has demons and demonic possession. You sure, Sam? And apparently shapeshifters too. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so funny to hear every single time because like, I mean, I'm sure many have them and maybe all do have them. But like, are you sure? Have you studied every single culture in the world, Dean? And then they're looking back at where the trail disappears and they realize that maybe this guy went underground through the sewers. So they go in. So they go down to the sewer, which 
<laughs> the whole time when this was happening, I was like, oh, maybe Carmen the sewer lady was oh, Sam and Dean all along. <laughs> the sewer lady. It was her. Uh, in the sewer, so Sam and Dean are f- find the shedding of the shifter. And it's like gelatinous, um, fleshy, hairy. It's disgusting is what it is. And then they go back to the car where Sam says the only way to kill a shifter is... Silver bullet to the heart. So Sam receives a call from Beck while Dean is um, fixing up the guns. And Beck has discovered that Dean is not actually a police officer. And she is obviously upset. She chews him out and then hangs up on him. So Dean comes up to Sam and says, See, told ya, this is what's gonna happen. We are not like other people. It, it would be easier if you're just like me. Because if people knew the real you, they'd be freaked out. Boo. And then, Boo. And then Dean says, um, But you know... Hunting is not without its perks. And handsome a gun. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's so great. We get to hold guns. Like, is that a perk? Is that a perk? Oh, well. I, I would assume that shooting something is a very traumatic experience. Like, no matter... I, I don't know. People hunt, though, right? So, like, I guess it's fun. Yeah, and people, like, do target practice with rifles and stuff for fun so maybe maybe it is fun i don't know maybe it is anyway sam puts the gun on his ass <laughs> oh, no. slay right i was like all oh, sam wears white briefs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i noted the color of his underpants they go back to the sewers and they're walking around and they find the lair they find it because they know it's the lair because it has a lot of shit in it like shit is in not shit but like stuff stuff <laughs> clothes and blood and guts like shedding it has like blood and uh flesh etc they find the shifter slayer and the shifter finds them so the shifter hits dean on the shoulder and then sam and dean splits up and gives chase and while they're running it's so funny because the difference between sam walking around hiding his gun pretending to be calm and yeah. Dean just running around with his gun out like yep. a police officer is so fucking funny. So yeah, Sam has given up and then Dean shows up and they both agree that they couldn't find anyone. Then a car passes by and we see in the headlights that Dean's eyes are silver. Dun dun dun. It's not him at all. They go to the Impala and the shifter asks Sam for the keys. Sam, my smart boy, asks, hey, didn't dad once face a shapeshifter in San Antonio because he's checking if this is actually Dean? But the shapeshifter gives the right answer that it was actually in Austin and it wasn't a shapeshifter. So Sam feels reassured and throws the keys at the shifter. Then while the shifter's opening the trunk, Sam points the gun at him and says, don't move. What have you done with him? The shifter is pretending that he's still Dean, but Sam says that, hey, you caught those keys with your left hand, which isn't possible because you got hit in the shoulder earlier. Um, the shifter dares Sam to shoot him, but Sam is hesitating because he's not sure, and then he knocks Sam out with a crowbar, and Sam wakes up tied up in the sewers. So Sam wakes up in the sewer, and shifter Dean is there. So the shifter reveals that he is learning about Dean through, like, as Dean says later, Vulcan mind meld. Yeah, we hear, like, the worst, like, voiceover of a bunch of jumbled audio clips. This scene was so fucking goofy. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like we are shown this recall through, like, a super silly scene where... Dean, where Shifter Dean is holding his head and like jerking around yeah. and the voiceover is happening. And it looks so fucking stupid. It's so funny, but also like if I knew Dean's thoughts, like I would also be holding my head and jerking it around. Like <laughs> all those problems and disorders, I would not survive. Okay, so we get to the part that made me scream. This part, the Shifter says to Sam that Dean has got issues with you. I got issues with you. You got to go to college. I had to stay home. Like, at this point, he has 
fully absorb Dean's personality. So his his thoughts are basically Dean's thoughts at this point. And he is angry at Sam for going off to college, for leaving him. And he says, don't you think I had dreams of my own? And this whole time, I was like holding my head in my hands and going, ah! Yeah, I was I was more subdued because as you know, I'm not I'm not the biggest <laughs> fan of Dean. But yeah, no, it is quite sad, but also I feel like at this point I was more in Sam's mindset of like not knowing what was real and not knowing what was just, you know, just him trying to manipulate Sam, make him feel bad. So I guess I just took this with a bit more of a grain of salt. Though I'm sure from a writing standpoint they meant all of this to be true. And then Dean continues. He says, you know, I'm jealous. Well, Shifter Dean. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm jealous. You've got friends. You could have a life of your own. Me? I know I'm a freak. Sooner or later, everyone's gonna leave me. And Crystal? (laughs) There's a wolf inside me, and the wolf is a Dean girl. (laughs) And I am going, yes, everyone leave you. Go. Run. Everyone. (laughs) Do it. You're so mean. You're so mean. <laughs> yeah. So Dean's like, you left. Dad left. Left me with your sorry ass. He says again that the but the job is not without its perks. Yeah. I meet the nicest people. People like little Becky, who Dean would bang if he had the chance. So Shifter Dean goes to Becky's house and mm. Becky lets him in. Mm. It's so, what? It's so, wow. so, so bad. It's so bad. The shifter goes to Becky's house and is, says that he'd like to explain himself and wants to come in, etc. Then we're back to the sewers where we hear the actual Dean there being tied up. Um, Sam tells him that he went to Rebecca's in Dean's form. Dean says, well, he's not stupid. He picked the handsome one, which... I know it was supposed to be. I know it's supposed to be like a funny, lighthearted joke. It's like this: this girl who is Sam's friend is going to get raped and murdered, and you are talking about how that's good because you're hot, so she would let it happen. Like what? Stop! Shut up! I hate you! I hate you so much! I despise you! Can I give a point? I, li- Can I give a Dean Misog- <laughs> like half a Dean misogyny point. Okay, because you felt your emotion so strongly. Thank you. Can you. that 10.5 to 11. Yeah, all right. We've had 11 total Dean misogynies in the course of these six episodes so far. Yes. I also hate that line. It's so bad. I, yeah, there's ah. like a lot of humor in this episode, like as Dean and Sam head over to Rebecca's, that feels extremely out of place. Like Sam should be like terrified. Like this is his friend. Like, and he knows she's going to get raped and murdered, and he's, like, fairly normal about it. And Dean's just cracking jokes the whole time. And I understand, like, using humor when you're stressed to, like, try to calm down or cover up your emotions, but that's not what it feels like. It just feels like the writer thought that it was funny to have some funny lines in between, even though it feels completely inappropriate, and Sam and Dean thought that they were being funny, even though it was completely inappropriate. But, you know, whatever, whatever. So, yeah, now we're back at Rebecca's house, and it turns out that the shapeshifter explained shapeshifters to Rebecca and said that that's what happened with Zach. Rebecca says, well, what is it? Like a genetic freak? And the shapeshifter looks like his feelings are hurt. (laughs) <laughs> okay, and then he says, maybe. Evolution is about mutation, right? So maybe this thing was born human, but was different, hideous and hated, until he learned to become someone else. First, I want to say, this is not how evolution works. Why is this guy subscribing to the goddamn Lamarckian view of evolution? Like, <laughs> evolution happens throughout generations, but he's saying that this guy was born human and then somehow developed the ability to shapeshift? First off, I don't know if that's consistent with supernatural lore, I don't know, but that is not consistent with Darwinian modes of evolution, and we do not live in the fucking, I don't know, 1700s or whatever Lamarck's theories took place. This guy needs to go to science class more. I also took note of that. I was like, evolution? What are you talking about? 
what okay what if this is just lamarck like like centuries later and he never bothered reading further evolution <laughs> notes because he's too busy being an incel my my theory is that in the supernatural universe evolution does not exist oh my god and <laughs> no you're right because god is real like yeah god is real in the supernatural universe so it was actually like the, the the first week and like all the animals and adam and eve were created on the sixth day yeah maybe like supernatural is biblically accurate up until a point yeah no supernatural is biblically accurate and there's no evolution <laughs> that's wild that's wild i love that Oh, okay. I'm just gonna mention here that, like, this whole scene, they're trying to make the shifter sympathetic. But, like, the whole time I was like, yeah. okay, but nothing explains why he's okay, targeting he's women not? with horrific violence. I know, right? It's like, it's like, okay, I get it. Like, okay, like, you were born apparently hideous and hated. Like, that's bad. Like, ableism around facial, like, deformities is bad. Um, and, like, general, like, pretty privilege being a thing is bad. Okay, like, just take- if, like, this is, like, really awful and you, like, need to get out of, like, this systematic, like, discrimination, then just find someone who's, like, sick, who looks decent, take their face, and then just- just stick with that. Yeah. Why are you going around raping and murdering people? Especially because later on, later on in the show, we meet shifters that are, you know- good people yeah mia valens my beloved yeah, exactly the shifter therapist our beloved who shows up in a lot of supernatural fan fiction because he's a very good character but gets ignored in the plot yeah. and only shows up in one episode yeah. anyway i mean she also gets ignored in supernatural fan fiction she just shows up so she can turn into cast for dean <laughs> <laughs> is that the fix that you've read? I've read once where like yeah. <laughs> Dean goes to therapy and then Yeah, no, I've yeah, I've read fix where either she therapizes Dean or she turns into cast for Dean. I don't see any fix where it actually like works through her trauma around her murderous boyfriend. It's better than like making a character who's not a therapist a therapist. <laughs> You know what I mean? True. Like I like fix that have Missouri as a therapist. Yeah, yeah, they do that to Missouri a lot because she's a black woman. And they decide that that means she's a caretaker and has to sit around and nod wisely as Dean dumps all his problems on her. No, oh, they're out of the they're out of the sewers. They're out of the sewers and they're running and they decide that they're gonna call the police to tip them off about the shifter being at Rebecca's. Sam's like, sorry that I'm putting an APB out on you, but we gotta. So now we're back to the shifter at Rebecca's house, and they're continuing to try to make him sympathetic. He says, it's funny, I kind of understand him. He's all alone, close to no one. All he wants is for someone to love him. He's like me. How is this? How is the, 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 the murdering? And the rape- how is- how- how does that make people love you? How is this giving you some- I don't understand, sir. Hello? What? Hello? You are- you are raping these women, and then you are tying them up and torturing them for a bit, and then they die thinking that the person that they love most in the entire world is a terrible person who only wanted them for their body and also to murder them. Like, what? I don't understand. I don't get it, but okay. Okay, whatever. Now he really starts creeping on her. Like, he starts touching her inappropriately, and he leans in to whisper something to her, which we don't hear. But it freaks Becky out, and she tries to call the police, but Shifter Dean takes her, and it's a really violent scene. And it's it's like, really bad to look at. I had to pause a lot. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> and Shifter Dean ties her up, and then basically we get the intro scene, but now with different music and shifter dean's perspective oh well first yeah first we hear him say you're a nice girl rebecca i mean i liked you believe me that makes this harder like god he's such an incel he's such an incel and he says but i gotta do what i gotta do why do you gotta do this i don't get it what do you gotta do why 
like I get that he's a monster and we're supposed to hate him, but like I don't know. Like you know what I mean, right? Like because in Bloody Mary, yeah. it's not like we hate Mary. Like it's right. not like we hate the yeah, woman it's in like, white. Like I get it. You had a really bad time. And now, like, you, your mind has been sort of warped by being a spirit. This guy just sucks. Yeah. This guy just sucks. He's just a guy, and he sucks. So, it's from Dean's perspective, meaning that we end... The the, the intro scene ends with Dean basically um, holding his hands up while holding a knife. So, it continues from that, and he throws the knife to the SWAT team person. And then he jumps off the balcony and starts running. And then he starts taking off his clothes. Yeah, we get our first shot of Dean's perky nipples. <laughs> I didn't notice at all because I knew what was coming. I knew that this scene is disgusting, so I was like prepared to look away. Uh, he starts stripping his clothes and his skin and his teeth, and it's it's a scene. Yeah. It's a good scene. Yeah. I liked it quite a bit. I was like, yeah, because I feel like most of the shapeshifters that I encounter are in fantasy, and those transitions are very smooth. So I was like, I like that this is like gory and gritty and gross. It's fun. I'm glad that the prosthetics team got to have their, their day in the spotlight. And okay, this is the point where we bring up too, I guess, that... If you are watching with us, because I know some people do this, like they watch the episode and then they listen to the podcast episode. Um, if you're watching on Netflix, the music is different. So uh, take that into consideration when we say that the music is good or like uh, they're singing <laughs> Hot Blooded or something. It's different music. So yeah. Are you watching on Netflix? No, I am not watching on Netflix. Oh yeah. I'm also not watching on Netflix. So I get the original music. Okay, so Sam and Dean are outside, and they see a news report on a television display. There are so many scenes in Supernatural, I know, later, where people are looking at news on, like, giant displays of television facing outside of a store. I don't know if I've ever seen a store like that before. Have you? I've only seen them in movies. Yeah, same. Like, I yeah, is that an actual thing? Maybe, maybe we're too young for... Maybe we're too young. Maybe yeah. we're too young. Yeah, they say that the police showed up to Rebecca's house. They found her bound and gagged and that her attacker was a white male and there's a sketch on the screen. Dean says, man, that's not even a good picture, which again is supposed to be funny, but I was waiting for either one of them to express any kind of relief that Rebecca's alive, but neither of them seemed to care about that fact. They were just like, what a bad picture. Boohoo, I'm gonna kick a can of soda and continue on my merry way. Dean says, I want to find that handsome devil and kick the holy crap out of him. Which again is more like out of place seeming humor. They need to find weapons to shoot the shifter with. So they decide to head over to Rebecca's to get the Impala because that's where the silver bullets are. Dean's very upset at the thought of the shifter driving his car. They, yeah, they just really try to make Dean funny here, and I'm just not amused because I'm still very upset about this whole episode. Yeah. And also, <laughs> this is probably inappropriate, but, like, he was basically, like, not dressed, you know, this whole scene. Like, he's... Oh, yeah, no, Dean's just in a shirt. And, like, I was thinking, like, is this... Does this count as fan service, you know? Huh. Yeah. Having him in one layer. I mean, to be fair, he looks good, so maybe it does, but... <laughs> I don't know if it's fan service. Like, I feel like a lot of people just wear a t-shirt. <laughs> but also, I guess, on Supernatural, it's fan service if, like, Cass's sleeves are a little rolled up on his trench coat and you still see the entire suit jacket underneath. So yeah, I guess in this, this fan service show, where men never show ankle or even like wrist. I guess this is this is fan service. So they show up to the Impala, but then police cars show up and surround them because they've probably been waiting for Dean to return to his car. And Sam tells Dean to jump over a fence while Sam holds them off. So Sam puts his hands up and gets arrested probably. While Dean gets weapons from the trunk and decides that he's gonna go after the shifter. 
Dean escapes, right, and goes to the sewers by himself. He's walking around, and he goes to the lair, and he finds Becca tied up in the sewer. And I was so confused by this. Yeah, me too. Like, at what point did the swap happen? Exactly. Because, like, also because when we saw Becca, she was bloody. And she basically, like, how was she out and about moving the next day, right? Like, I would presume she'd be in a hospital. Right, me too. Well, she said, what did she say? She said that she was... She was walking home, and then she was grabbed, and the next thing she knows, she's in the sewer. Was she walking home from the hospital after a two-minute long stay? (laughs) Oh my god, I don't get it. Yeah, I have no fucking idea. But uh, we got to Sam talking to, now we know, Shifter Becca, which... Man, Sam, are you stupid? Like... Yeah, genuinely are you, are you stupid? stupid she looks completely fine she's giving him beer and is completely cheery and cool like that doesn't make sense she should be fucking traumatized and also also at this point like i mean we don't know what happened when sam immediately showed up but like i feel like to put on a convincing performance this rebecca shifter had to like scream and throw things at him and go like your brother tried to rape and kill me oh my god go away what the fuck go away like how did how did it yeah but no he he just shows up and she's like hey hi bestie here's a beer omg shapeshifters what the hell are those (laughs) yeah anyway the shift um so becca and dean hurry to the house so becca believes dean now because she saw the shifter convert to her so um, there's no issues in that department, but as we said earlier, there are issues right. in literally every other department. <laughs> so, and I do feel like Rebecca should still flinch when she sees Dean. Like, even if she knows that it's not the shifter, like, he's, like his face is still probably associated with one of the worst moments of her life. But she's, like, totally fine and friendly with him. And she doesn't even, like, test him to make sure that he's not the shifter like what if the shifter turned into rebecca and then turned back into dean and the dean in front of her is still the shifter but she seems totally fine to just trust that this is the real dean yeah rebecca's just not written very well she's not written very well so the shifter converts back to dean and sam escapes from his ropes because like the shifter tied him up when he fell unconscious oh yeah it knocked him out tied him up yeah And then Sam escapes from his ropes by cutting it through the shifter's knife. So now it's Sam and the shifter. Yeah, it was very, it was a cool scene. I I liked Sam's whole thing. The fight scene was very good because they really utilize the area. Yeah, yeah, the the various props in the house. Because the the, the plot with the knife is that the shifter places the knife on the table. Like he stabs it through the table and then Sam like cuts his ropes by... Um, slicing it through the knife and I was like oh that's so cool yeah I was like oh my god Sam good job (laughs) at first they were on even ground especially because Sam had a knife but eventually the shifter corners Sam and starts choking him well okay first first the shifter says even when we were kids I always kicked your ass which I know just means like during play fighting but it literally just sounds like Dean as a six year old was like beating up a two year old (laughs) Like, even when we were kids, like, obviously when you were kids, he always kicked his ass because Sam was, like, four and you were eight. Like, duh. So, Dean arrives and shoots the shifter. So, he crouches beside the shifter that is now dead while Becca goes up to Sam. And he takes back his necklace. Yeah, the scene of Dean crouching next to the shifter is in, like, so many gift sets and AMVs and such. It's like... People say that th- uh, this episode is a Dean thesis episode. I also heard that, but I watched this episode and I was like, this is about Sam and him not fitting in at Stanford. I, that is also what I thought. Like, I thought about it as more of a Sam thing. As Even the part where Dean was like, I'm jealous of you, blah, 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 blah. Right. I was like, this is Sam learning things about Dean. Yeah. It's like those moments, as you said earlier in the show, that like, it's one of those moments when you realize your sibling is an actual person. Now we're at the epilogue, and Rebecca's fine. She's just totally Completely fine. fine. Nothing happened She's to her. She's completely fine. Yeah, 
She she was not for like fearing for her life. She was not beaten bloody. She was not tied up in a sewer. She's just completely chill. She's like trolling her hair. Oh, so this is what you do? You hunt down these kinds of things? I can't believe it. Like, girl, girl, why are you written like this? I'm so sorry for how you were written, Becca. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry, Rebecca. Like, I don't know. Like, I want to like read the fic where like years later. She still, like, is testing all of her family members with silver blades and, like, like not trusting things. And, like, every time she, like, remembers it, she, like, has nightmares and, like, she still flinches at the sight of Dean and anyone who looks like Dean, even though she knows that she's safe. Like, she should not be fine. She shouldn't be fine. But whatever. <laughs> okay, so Rebecca's like, like, no one at school knows that you do this? And Sam says no. Rebecca says, did Jessica know? And Sam says no, she didn't. And Rebecca says, must be lonely. And Sam says, what can I do? It's my family. I know. I was, like, expecting him to say that, like, it's not lonely. I have my brother or something like that. Yeah, no, but it's, like, I am trapped because family is hell. <laughs> but it's fucking lonely as fuck. Yeah, it's so sad. And they hug. And Rebecca asks him to call. And Sam says, like... It might not be for a little while, but I think we know that he never calls. Um, so he gets back into the car, and Dean asks about about Zach, and Sam says that they're letting Zach go because they found Zach's clothes in the sewer lair, so they think that Dean's the one who killed Zach's girlfriend. They don't ask about the the Asian man, the most important character in all of Supernatural, but I'm going to assume that he's also going to go free uh, and that his, that the murder of his p girlfriend or wife is going to be placed on Dean as well. So in the car, uh, the terrible green screen is back. And yeah. <laughs> Sam has line art again. And Dean says, um, I'm sorry. I wish you could be just, you know, a good old college boy, all that. And Sam says... This is the one we were discussing earlier that in Stanford, I never really fit in. So, yeah. Mm. And S Dean says, yeah, because you're a freak. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Dean. He really comforted him. Yeah. And then Sam says, oh, no, no, no. Dean says, well, I'm a freak too. I'm right there with you all the way. And Sam says, I know you are. And Dean cracks his one final joke that like he's gonna miss his funeral and it's such a bummer right. and then the episode ends so uh what did you think about this episode i mean it was upsetting like i thought bloody mary was upsetting and then i got to this episode and i was like oh no this is what upsetting looks like it's not scary but it is upsetting yeah it's not scary but it's extremely upsetting i just yeah i just hate that Lindsay's like last thought was that her husband like wanted to hurt and torture her for hours Ugh. anyway well i mean we do learn like a lot of like good things about sam and dean's character so it's an important character building episode and i liked i liked the way that the the beginning scene was shot and i liked the prosthetics on the skin shedding i wish rebecca was written like a person instead of like I don't know, every single woman in Supernatural. Yeah, there are like some very good things about this episode and there are things that I just I just despise about this episode. You? Uh, for me, I don't know. I don't remember what my reaction to this episode was like the first, the other times I've watched it. Like, I'm assuming I liked it because I like Dean, but like now that I watch it again, it's not really a Dean-centric episode, or it's not as much as a Dean-centric episode as I was led to believe, unlike, like, Dead in the Water, right. or, you know. Yeah, like, this is a Sam episode to me. I mean, there are some lines that reveal a lot about Dean's character that I guess could be considered thesis statements, but I think the overall effect of this episode is, like, just on Sam learning more about his brother being a person and also, like, feeling out of place at Stanford, etc. So, best line, worst line. What's your best line? I I liked Sam, you know, saying the truth is, even at Stanford, deep down, I never really fit in. 
And I also liked the, the whole resulting exchange about freakishness. Because I know that I know that this comes back to haunt both of them soon. And also, I don't know, it's just good. It's just a good continuation of the last episode where we learn about how Sam ignored his premonitions because he wanted so bad to be normal and to fit in at Stanford, even though, like, something in him will never be able to do that. So, yeah, I thought that was good. What was your best line? My best line was um, the Dean Shifter monologue. Well, not the monologue with Becca. The monologue in front of Sam about... Um, I About... What was it? Oh, like, I had dreams too. yeah. It really hit me because, like, the whole point of Dean being, like, everyone abandons me and, like, I can never do things for myself. And it's it's very sad. And I, I did like it. Like I said, I was holding my head in my hands when that scene was yeah. happening. What's your worst line? Uh, the, the, this isn't a Hooters, I wish. Oh, yeah, that's understandable. Uh, my worst line is, he's smart. He picked the handsome one. Because I literally oh, booed yeah, no, on my screen when that happened. I was like, sucked. boo, boo. Yeah, it sucked. It sucked. I am DB rating. Damn. Um, yeah, no, this is a tough one. Because, I mean, I I know that this one's quite popular. Um, And especially amongst, amongst the fans of Dean. I think that the way that it was shot was done pretty well. And I feel like people who generally like true crime stuff and are sort of desensitized to or even enjoy seeing violence against women on tv would be like very into the mystery here so um okay so last time bloody mary was an 8.4 right yes. so i'm gonna i'm gonna say this is an 8.5 oh i'm doing the opposite route uh last time was okay. 8.4 so i'm going 8.3 okay, okay yeah let's look it up let's see ah <gasps> We missed it! 8.4. Oh! Oh my god! Okay. So, so it was exactly the same as Bloody Mary. All right. I think what really brought this episode to life was the prosthetics. I think the effects were really good. Yeah, his teeth fell out. Yeah, the music was also impressive. Yeah. So... Mm. Okay, that makes sense as an IMDb rating. Yeah, it's like... I didn't like it as much as Bloody Mary, but I feel like quality-wise, it was... On par Almost with the it. same, yeah. That's it for this episode of Bus Asian Beauties. Next time we will be talking about season one, episode seven, Hookman. Leave us a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beauties podcast and on Tumblr at busty Asian Beauties Pod.tumblr.com. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustyasianbeautyspod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.